You might know me from my Incredible Science YouTube channel, but what you might not know is I actually do live science shows in front of hundreds and sometimes thousands of people. Now, liquid nitrogen is the most important part of my show. It's not that easy to get, but without it, there is no show. The liquid nitrogen is negative 320 degrees. All you need is the container, the doer. Bring it to the chemical shop and they'll fill it up for you. But you need to understand just exactly how to handle it before you just start playing with liquid nitrogen. You can't just dunk your hand in it. You can't just make clouds in any closed room because that could lead to disastrous results. I have to strap them in really tight in my car because I can't have them jostling around and having the gas pour out of my car. You guys just see the cool clouds and explosions and doing cool tricks with it, but there's a lot that's involved and a lot to know. The best part is with any good trick and science experiment, it's supposed to look easy to you. And that's how I know I did it right. It's actually probably one of the most nerve wracking parts of doing the show is the prep before the show with the liquid nitrogen. All right, so to start off the show, I wanna get people pumped and show them something they haven't seen. So I take some liquid nitrogen, I scream, welcome to the incredible science show. I throw liquid nitrogen up in the air and I know it could land on me even for a split second because of the light and frost effect, I'm protected. But it lands on the floor and it goes in the air and their eyes wide in amazement. They see a cloud spreading on the floor, filtering down through the air, going over me, and they're blown away right from the start. And then I tell them, just wait till the end because we're doing this a hundred times bigger. So they're hooked. I sometimes call up kids to be a volunteer. I make them seem as if I've never tried any of these experiments before and say, what would happen if I pour liquid nitrogen on your hand? And I know nothing will happen if it's just for a split second and I wipe it off. Even if I don't wipe it off, I just am extra careful with it. What would happen if I take their yarmulke, pour liquid nitrogen in it? I always tell them they're the coolest kids in the room. Literally, negative 320 degrees. Pour it on their yarmulke, which is placed on their head. But even with that, I have to be extra careful. I'll never do it on a volunteer that they're hair is way too short. One time someone asked me to call up one of the staff in the camp that I was in and that guy was shiny Mr. Clean bald. And he's like, can you put the yarmulke on his head? And I said, I'm sorry, I can't. No offense, but he's bald. It's gonna hurt his head because of how cold it is. But when you have hair, any amount of hair, big enough, especially with a kid, then they don't feel it because the hair absorbs it and they're, they walk around like with a smoking trail. It looks like their head is on fire, but it's not, it's actually cold. So I move from the liquid nitrogen to the fire experiments, negative 320 to hot fire. I take my jacket off to be safe, although I tell everybody I'm freezing from the liquid nitrogen, but I gotta be safe. I don't want anything flammable near me. I do my hand on fire, light it, everybody freaks out, and I always tell them, why are you screaming? I'm the one with my hand on fire. And then I move on to the fire tornado. Once we have the lights off, we're dealing with fire. We're hitting them with the cool fire experiments. And then I do the whoosh bottle experiment. That bottle experiment is one of people's most favorite experiments of the show. Not even so much from the fire that's lighting up the bottle, but from the surprise after that the bottle actually crushes from the air pressure and vacuum inside it. They love that, they don't expect it. At the start of the show, I love when people are telling me, oh, I, I don't like science shows, or what tricks do you have? And I say, just watch. Come to me after the show and tell me if you still don't like science shows. And without fail, I always get, that was amazing, that was incredible, that was the best show I've ever seen. They don't expect to see a 30 foot cloud exploding on stage in front of them. So during the show, I sometimes make it seem like I mess up or something didn't work because I wanna misdirect them to what the experiment really is without them knowing what it is. So for example, in the magnets that I have, which are really suction cups, I make it seem that they can't pull it apart. And then I walk in front of them and the whole crowd sees that they pull it apart simply. And I make it seem like, uh, maybe we did it wrong, maybe we did it the wrong way. And there's like, they're, they're all awkward for me, making it seem like, oh, this guy must be so embarrassed. And I tell them, I'm actually not embarrassed. And do you know why? Because these aren't magnets, they're actually suction cups. This is how you do it. And then I clamp it shut and they are struggling to pull it apart. And then the crowd knows that I have them in my back pocket. They know that I'm running the show. But there was one time I actually messed up huge. And I had to play it off because I'm doing a show in front of a ton of people. I can't mess up, right? And any mess up, you have to make it seem that that's part of the show, but I'm human. And here's what happened. I was doing the grand finale liquid nitrogen experiment and I wanted to impress 
this camp, the people that I went to, because it was the camp I went to when I was younger. So I wanted to do it bigger and better than ever before. The one thing I went against my rule is don't try anything the first time in front of a live crowd. Always practice and build up bigger and bigger until you know you've done it 10, 20 times, you know it works. Normally, I stand on a chair and I dump the water into liquid nitrogen. This time I figured, let me go higher. Luckily, I didn't make the water hotter because you know, hot and cold makes the cloud. I never use boiling water because if you use boiling water and that splashes on someone, it could actually burn them. So never did I think that I would be the one with the water splashing in my face, but here's what happened. So I'm going up this ladder, higher and higher, everyone's watching. The liquid nitrogen cloud is about to erupt. I'm feeling all awesome because I know the reaction of this massive cloud about to erupt with the soap in it, with the paint, it's gonna be foam. And I'm climbing up on the ladder. I have the hot water in my hand, not boiling, thankfully. And I count down and we're counting down. And you see me climb on the ladder. I'm on the top step and that is when the ladder gave out. And I feel myself start tipping off the ladder. I was like, oh my God, no, no, no. But I was more focused on no, no, no. I don't want this experiment to fail versus no, 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 I'm falling off the ladder. I wasn't worried about hurting myself. I mean, it wasn't from a building, it was from a ladder. I was just thinking, get this experiment to work in front of everyone. I do not want to fail. So I sort of pushed the bucket in as I'm falling and that's what you see and most of the water went in, it erupted, I fell to the ground. This was not supposed to happen. But I get up and I go, yeah, and everyone is not sure what just happened, but they just saw a massive explosion. <laughs> and that was the biggest and pretty much only fail I've had in my shows and I don't even know if that was a fail just from hurting myself a little bit, but the experiment sort of worked. But that was, yeah, that was not fun. The funny part is, as a kid I was super shy. And the last thing I ever expected to be doing is performing in front of hundreds and sometimes thousands of people. Life is unexpected, but you make the best of it and you ride with it. When life gives you lemons, you explode them. See you in the next video, everybody. As always, stay incredible.